listeners. Uh, yeah, last week I didn't manage to stream because uh, last week was a little busy. Yeah, so yeah, we are back to our weekly streams again. And today uh, we'll be doing the next stage for four buttons. Hang on a while. Yeah, I just realized I didn't connect my charger to the laptop. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So uh, today we'll be doing four buttons. And uh, today uh, we'll be doing a stage, the next stage called stage three, where we will basically be doing something like code breakers. Uh, so it's inspired. Um, this game was inspired by my little kid playing around with buttons. So this uh, third stage is related to like how to unlock a phone. <laughs> So maybe I'll just go through like what, what, what we have done so far for the first few stages. So for the first stage, okay, if we just look at the game here, maximize the game. So this is the interface for the game. Okay, if I click start game, okay, I haven't clicked the start button yet, that's why I haven't loaded. So once we start the game, so first stage is like counting the numbers like up to 100. So this is actually inspired by like, the aircon switch <laughs> where you have to you know, go to a certain temperature. Yeah, but of course, um, this is not as uh, difficult. Uh, actually, aircon is not as difficult, but just thought that it wouldn't be as fun, you know, because if we were to just use an aircon, it's pretty easy to set the temperature, like one up and one down. Hi, uh, medium bananas. Yeah, no, no, no problem. <laughs> yeah, just enjoy yourself. Yeah, so this is just like a recap of uh, what I've done so far for this game. And then like, now I'm just going to like do a third stage, okay? So this is uh, uh stage two was to create this target color. So like the target color here is like purple. Okay, I don't know what you call this color. My my color knowledge is pretty limited. Yeah, I'm, I only know like red, green, blue, <laughs> yellow. <laughs> this color is a little more than pink, a little less than purple. Okay, but anyway, um, yeah, you just have to figure out like how to get this. But this is actually pretty hard. I have no idea how to get this color. Okay, let's see. So this is blue, red, blue. No, this doesn't cut it. I know that you have to probably do a variant of... Oh, look, look, this is like purple. One, two, three. Okay, so it looks like maybe one blue and two red. Ah, okay, yes, correct. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so so this is the game so far. So the aim is to press as few buttons as possible. Okay, so let's, uh, let's just go back to the game itself over here. So right now, the next stage that I'll do is uh, I'll do something like uh, unlock your phone using a sequence of button presses. So the four buttons will be button presses. Yeah, so actually all the stages that I have in mind, they are all like pretty diverse. Yeah, then there'll be another stage is like, you know, um, dance, dance, revolution. Your four buttons are your arrow keys and then you need to press um, to hit the arrows in time. Yeah, only when you hit it correctly, then you move to the next stage. Yeah, so that's, that's probably one stage idea as well. Another stage idea is like five bulbs and then you need to click on it. Each button will control only a few bulbs, ranging from one to five bulbs. And then it will like toggle between on and off. And then you need to hit a certain configuration to, to pass. Yeah, so that's another stage. Yeah. So today we'll be doing the code breaker stage where we have a, a what do you call that? A password combination that you need to guess. And then you, your four buttons will be the respective password configurations itself. So I'm just going to replicate stage one because stage one is most similar to, to what. I'm intending to do here. So this will be called stage three. Let's open up stage three. So over here, um, you can see that this is stage one and over here we have the script called number count. Okay, number count, light bulb. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, maybe I'll just use the light bulb switch because like I don't really need a very difficult interface for this one. Yeah, I'm just gonna like open the light bulb script. Okay. Okay, and then maybe I'll just you know, create a new script. 
this called password. So this so this stage is 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 called password. So we want to you know guess a password. So let's just open this password. I'll just copy and paste this entire light bulb thing into the password. Okay, and then uh, what we need to do is you need to just put this thing password. Okay, so uh, the password wise, okay, so over here, um, let's see the menu. I have to change the menu. So the menu header over here, uh, stage. So this one will be stage three. Okay, and then here the instructions will be to guess. Or I can just call it password. Yeah, and then maybe I'll just try to standardize the font size. Over here, best fit max size would be. Yeah, maybe I'll just add in another space. I think it's fine. Yeah, this this size is fine. Yeah, so. This is password and then like over here at the this image itself the main text over here i could just replace it with like dot 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 so when you get when you get the first password correctly then it will show one by one okay maybe i won't even show what you press I'll just be like star, 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 and then star, and then unlock. Yeah, so be wrong. So we start with, with five dots as the as the password, and then this four buttons will be the the password itself. The Okay, so I guess, you know, since each of the stages are kind of different, I don't really need a prefab for this. Yeah, but I, I, I think I'll just leave it as prefab anyway. Yeah, it doesn't really matter to me. Okay, so this number count here is going to change the password. Okay, and then we're going to use this thing here. So instead of having a sprite renderer and an image, Okay, we don't have to do this anymore. Okay, we just need the text. Okay, and um, this text will be the password text. Yeah, so the password text will be to just manipulate the um, password itself. So button press threshold, all this we can change. Subdivisions we don't need already. Okay, so red num, green num, all this uh, not needed. So instead what we have is we will have a, a set of numbers whereby we can compare the the final state. Okay, so the first um will be a. Okay, so we can have like this int um go num. Okay, so over here the solution count is five. Over here the go num is five. Okay. This can be changed again later based on the solution count. Okay, so I mean, I could do like this as a static array, which is fixed in size, or I could use a list in order to basically um, have a variable number of like passwords that I could put in. Yeah, but right now I'll just use like uh, an array with a size of five. Okay, so this um, should have four different numbers that you put in 0 1 2 3 and 4 yeah I mean there's another way I can do this uh, I can also use like a large enough number and I store the password as a number so if it's a five digit password it will be one four three four five something like that a one two three four three it's just like a five digit number and then I'll just compare the digits one by one or I actually I could also store it as a string yeah actually maybe a string will be easier so we can just compare the string so yeah so the string would start off as as basically uh yeah, i think a string will be much easier then we don't have to like set a fixed size because in c sharp you can actually add strings like that 
and then they will like concatenate both strings together and extend its size. So yeah, a string would be good. I think a string would be the ideal data type here for a password uh, kind of game. Okay, so what I need to do right now is I will need to um, okay, this reset color or this uh, we can change this whole thing. Okay, so what we do need to do is we need to call set goal. Okay, check goal, we can still keep it. Okay, so we have a string password and we have a string my password. Okay, so what's the difference? Okay, so we maybe have a goal password and a my password. Okay, so the goal password will be um, basically to make sure that the password is, 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 is the goal password is the password that we want to, to target, the final password that you should have. The my password is the, the current password that we have right now. So firstly, when we start, okay, we just need to make sure that my password is, is now. Okay, so just let me, okay, so let's see, goal password. Oh, sorry, string C sharp, just to refresh this. So in order to do strings, okay, I mean, mine's by character array, but there's also a string class. So you can add strings together like that. Okay, you can create substring, you can find the index of a certain character. Okay, okay, so one thing I forgot is uh, how to get string length in C sharp. Yeah, I think it might be string dot length. Hey, hi, it's Hati. <laughs> nice to see you on my stream. Yeah, yep. so um, this is the string length here. Okay, so one thing later when we do our password thing, we need to like check the length of the string for my password. And then we compare with the corresponding character in the goal password in order to check. Okay, it's in order to check what is the, the password that is, whether the password is correct or not. So like if you look here in the game, so this is, the, this is what I intend to do. Okay, so um, in this image main text, as you type in your password, maybe a, a star will come out like A, B, D. Oh yeah, thanks, it's Hati. Yeah, and it's okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, what I'm doing right now is basically I'm just intending to create my own game anyway. <laughs> the stream is a byproduct. Yeah, but I treat it as a way for people to learn as well, I guess, and give ideas. So yeah, if you want to like ask something about what I'm doing. Feel free to type in the chat. Yeah. But yeah, all the best for your studies as well. Okay, so the moment we come up with an incorrect character, it's gonna display wrong. Okay, so so that is what we want to do. And then after we display wrong, okay. Um there will be a period of time like one second where the input that um, the inputs won't cause any change. And then after that, we'll go back to this five again. Oh, sorry, go back to this five here again. So that's, that's how we're going to do it. Like one star, two star. Yeah. So this is give you an idea of what, what we'll be doing. Okay. So, so first, okay, we set the my password as a now password. Um, we, we do a set goal. So the check goal, check goal is very simple. So it is just to see whether or not the password is the same as my password. So whenever this happens, we can load the next scene already. That means we have, we have succeeded. Okay. Uh, update button press, uh, we don't have to, we don't have to change it. Uh, but over here, the what text to display, I could just arbitrarily just put A, B, C, D. Yeah, because honestly, it doesn't matter what password <laughs> you're typing. Yeah, so actually in this case, um, there's no real need to show people what, what's the password, um, what, what the letter, what, what letter they're typing here, but I'll just put A, B, C, D just, you know, to, to just show people what they're pressing, okay? Yeah, so set goal. Okay, so set goal is basically to randomize this uh, goal password here. So 
that is exactly what we need to do here. So we want, okay. Okay, what, what did I do here? Apply, no, this was to set the color. So, um, okay, we don't need a reset color here. There's no need to do that. There's no need to do set target and everything. No, nope, no need. Okay, so for this set goal is very simple. We just want to generate a five character password so that um there is a, a way to you know like come up with the end goal that the user would need to try their best to achieve okay all right so how do we do this um in order to do that we firstly will need to set our password okay to be a now password okay and then for Okay, for, for solution count, okay, int i equals zero, i smaller than solution count, i plus plus, this means I loop five times, okay, random dot range, zero, five, okay, so random dot range, okay, let me just show you, random dot range, so what does random dot range do for uh, unity, random dot range, um, basically, gives you a random inclusive and exclusive sorry it gives you a random integer within this range inclusive and max exclusive not including max exclusive so like 0 10 will give me 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 but it won't give me 10 okay so this is uh, what in does so if i do like 0 i should do 0 4 actually because there's only four buttons so when i do 0 4 it gives me 0 one, two, and three. So um, that will be a total of four numbers, zero, one, two, and three. Okay, so random dot range. Every time, there's no need to, unlike the previous few levels, there's no need to like, check redundancy or basically check whether we press a button too much. There's no need to do that here because when we do zero comma four, okay, uh, we are just applying it for one of the password itself, like A, D, A, B, C, you know, that kind of thing. So, so there's no real need okay to really you know to, to really care about like whether the password is the same identical to all the passwords or not so it doesn't matter so so let's just put the password as a b c d okay and then over here okay so this basically is a string and then with this index And I can do this. Go password plus equals to this, uh, which means that it takes in a random uh, letter from A, B, C, D from this range, random dot range 0, 4. It takes in this. Okay. And then uh, what it does is that it just adds it to this go password. So at the end, uh, we will have a go password that is like five digits long or five letters long in this case. Okay. So uh, next. We we'll need to do the okay so we do have this password text here that we need to fill in so when do we fill in this password text is at the beginning okay whenever i do my reset password okay so maybe we should still have a reset password here okay and what the reset password does is that It resets your password. Very, very simple function. It just um, just sets your password to blank. And not only that, um, you also want to display your password. So in order to do that, uh, we go to password text dot text equals to, okay, it's, it will be equals to my password. Okay, um, no, it's not that simple. Okay, so maybe I'll have, have another function called print password. Okay, so what print password does is okay, for integer i equals zero i smaller than my password dot length okay this tells us the, the length of that string i plus plus okay so so we firstly have a string display string and then we set it to be a, a an empty string so um, for i equals zero, i smaller than my password length, i plus plus. Okay, so uh, maybe we don't have to do 
this, okay, what we need to do is to do this um, display string equals to my password plus space, okay, so we need to add in spaces, okay, so in order to do the space, so um, how to add in duplicate characters in string C sharp. Best way to repeat a character. Yes. So one way is to do a for loop. Uh, I guess <laughs> uh, I guess this is the best way to do a repeat. Yeah. Yeah, new string space. Kind of sucky actually because it means that you know new string okay solution count minus okay so it is, is what we need to do is we need to do a new string star okay for every uh For the length of my password, okay, let me just shift this up. Oops, let me shift this up in case you can't see it. Okay, I hope I hope it's um uh, I hope it's viewable. So my password dot length and then the solution count my password dot length. Yeah, something like this. Yeah, so so something like this is good. Uh, This means that I print out star for every single character in my password, and I print out a space for every, okay, I should print out a dot for every um, character that I haven't typed yet. Okay, and uh, that's all for the print password command. Okay, so that's for, for print password. And then uh, the last thing we need to do in print password is, of course, to um, print out the password itself. So in order to do that, we just um, need to go to the password text dot text equals to display string yeah in fact i could just shorten this i don't even need this display display string anymore i could just could just use this directly and actually why not let's just do this directly yeah so this should display the password so every time the um the button is pressed okay we want to apply a an operation okay so what what is the apply operation? Actually, I don't need the apply operation for this. Okay, because it's pretty pretty straightforward for this um, for this game. Okay, so when we execute a button, okay, basically the button itself, okay, will be the index for my array. Okay, so when I execute the button, what I should do is I should. Firstly, update button press. Okay, so update button press is a, let's see, is a fixed script that updates how many times each button is pressed. We shouldn't change this. Okay, game manager app press. We shouldn't change this also because it updates to the overall game manager to tell us how many presses we have made so far in the game. Okay, so the only thing that we should change is this lines in between, uh, where we basically um tell the game what exactly to do with the button press yeah and of course this this update new light bulb color this one is so this one is to check check if a uh, button press is actually no the button press is is wrong part right we can always do it yeah i think maybe you should do this Because if the button press is wrong, we're gonna display. Okay, so uh okay, let's do the first part first. So button will contain either zero, one, two, three, or four. So basically like this. So what we can do is we can do this, uh we can do A B C D button. Okay. And then what we can do is we can do a my password plus equals to this. Okay, which will add in the corresponding letter, either A, B, C, or D, according to the button press. Uh, there would be no reset button for this game. 
because it is quite straightforward, right? I mean, if you press the wrong combination of buttons, you will immediately be kicked out. Like <laughs> you will have to restart. Okay. So if the button press is correct, right, this should be is incorrect. Okay. So maybe this thing would uh, happen all the way at the end. Okay. At the end, we just check whether the button press is incorrect. So how do we check whether the button press is incorrect? Um, pretty simple. Uh, what we should do is we have a goal password, right? Right. So if the goal password, okay, and we want to take the substring, which is the length. So what? How do we do substring in C sharp? So we want to get the substring from this character. <laughs> substring, they give me guitar string. C sharp substring. Oh, I guess that's a C sharp string, I guess. <laughs> All right, so yeah, that's an interesting way to do it out. Okay, so the first N characters is like this, dot substring, starting index, and then the length. Okay, so we can do this dot substring method. So we can do this go password dot substring. Let me see how to do it. S U B S string zero comma, and then um we will take in the my password dot length. Okay, so if okay my password not equals to this. This thing okay what we want to do is we want to start coroutine okay start coroutine basically is uh to do something else in the in the background okay that um uh, that basically will be handled separately from the main game's main loop and uh, why do we want to do coroutine is because we want to do a certain delay to display the word wrong and then like go back again to where where we had I'll go back again to the beginning. So we, we need to do some co-routine here in order to add this time delay into the game. Okay, so if my button press is incorrect, I will start a co-routine. And uh, I'll do this co-routine very, very simply. Okay, I'll just call this co-routine um, wrong password. Yeah. So basically, if the uh, button press doesn't correspond to the goal password, we will display a wrong password. If not, okay, if not, what will happen is we will, um, every update, we'll, uh, sorry, if not, what will happen is we, we, we will need to print this password. So we add press, and then um, perhaps we could just print the password here already. I mean, regardless whether or not it's wrong, we can show that we print the password. Okay, to just update the length of the password. And then immediately after, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Okay. Because we want to display incorrect, right? Okay, if the button press is incorrect, so we do this I enumerable. Okay wrong password okay and then in this you return new wait for seconds one okay so, so this waits for one second uh so what we want to do is we want to print the password okay where's my print password here Okay, so print password. Okay, over here we want to like have a way to configure whether or not to print something. So let me see. Okay, so if text if text not close to a blank. Okay, password text dot text equals to text. Else, 
Yeah, so if let's say we have a certain text that we want to print, we print out the text. If not, we just print out the password. So by default, if I don't add any parameters, then it will just print out the password. If not, we can just print out like wrong over here. Okay, so in this start code routine, here yeah, we could print the password wrong. Okay, I like to do the same stuff in the same function. So this function is meant for printing. So we should put all our stuff that we want to do for printing into that function. So this is uh, like to me, this like function separation. Like you want a very clear separation between functions in your code. So we have this print password. We wait for seconds. Then after that, we will then reset the password. Okay, so reset password itself. Um, there's no need to do a print again because here has a print already. Okay, so reset password comes with print by default. So yeah, that should do it. Okay, so yeah, I think in the I inner variable, I'm not sure whether I can, you know, just um, and okay, so I innumerable is like this. In the code routine, so I'll true you return this. Yeah, I don't need to do a, a final you return thing. So it's you return the time here, and then whenever it's done, I can just you know just exit loop. I don't have to do another you return at the end. So this basically just waits for one second. Um, before updating the screen again. So yeah, I think that's more or less it. That's a let's uh, brace ourselves for the errors. I'm pretty sure that's gonna be errors. A good game always has errors. <laughs> no, I mean you will probably definitely have errors in this game. So here I have it as number count. I'm going to remove this component and I'm going to add password. Okay, so why is there a light bulb and target color? It means it hasn't. Okay, so there's some issues here. 959. 959 cannot change from string to character. So this should be a, a character. Okay. If you want to do a new string with a repeated character, you will need to use character symbol instead of a string symbol. Okay, um, cannot convert from I enumerable to string. That is line number 109. Why is it wrong? I innumerable to string. I mean, if you look at this, it's I oh, it's I enumerator. <laughs> Oops, it's I enumerator, not I innumerable. I enumerator, everyone. I, I enumerator. Oh, very nice. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to pass my password text, which is here. Um, password text, button text. So there are going to be four buttons. Okay, and then there will be four text. Let me just lock this here. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to drag this all inside here. Okay, great. So we have a button press text threshold and a solution count. So that's correct. So after five presses, the the num the letter A will appear. The solution count will be also um there. Solution count will depend. Uh, will show what it will basically tell me the number of dots that will appear on the screen at first. Okay, let's uh also do our build settings. Okay, and we add in stage three over here. So we have this scene. Uh, we have stage three. We just drag it in. Stage three should appear after stage two. Okay, I realized something. Um, I. I named it stage three with a space while my stage one stage two doesn't have. So let's just standardize it. So once it's there, the build settings all should be in order. And let's just see whether it works.
Okay, so yeah, I'm not too sure where the error is. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, this wasn't uh, the issue with my code. This is the issue with the buttons. So the button here is still referencing a now event. So I need to put my password here. And I will need to do an execute button. So execute button zero. Okay, this one will be execute button one. This one, okay, will be execute button two. Okay, the issue is because I use um, a different name for like the, the stage. So this stage is called password. So I have a, an ob, uh, a script called password to manage this. So I need to change the buttons every time I go to a new uh, stage. But I think it's fine because ultimately it's, all stages will be different in some aspect. So it's, it's normal. Okay, let's see whether it works now. Wrong. Oh. Oh, she's. B C C E, yes. All right, awesome. So, so I I think this that stage was more or less done. It's more or less done already. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that went smoother than expected. Okay. So let's see. This color is gray. Password. <laughs> Should I put an exclamation mark for wrong? <laughs> This is actually quite tough, eh? This this. Dun, dun, dun. Wrong. A A T E. -E. No. A A T -E. A. No. A A T -E. B B. A A T -E. B C. A T -E. B. A A T -E B -E B. Oh man. <laughs> oh no, this this stage is gonna be like killer for for people who I'm thinking whether or not like I should just Count them because see if you, you if you miss the last button you're gonna take a lot of button presses then it's gonna be down to chance already in order to get the minimum number of button presses for the password thing so there might be a way to um like help people get the password right without guessing too much so I'm thinking about how to do this uh, but firstly. I'm quite glad that it all worked out like immediately without me doing anything. So, you know, that was pretty smooth, smoother than I thought it, it would be. Yeah. So that was the password itself. Mm, how do I get the... Let me see. Yeah, maybe I'll share another one after you like press for after you press for a certain amount of time I will give the password okay let me think about it how do I want to give the password to the user 
so that the user doesn't need to guess so much. I think it's fine. Uh, we, could, we could still let the user guess. Yeah. But maybe I will just uh, have one button that does nothing. Maybe I'll still have a reset button for for this because I find that uh, four buttons for easy mode is a bit too hard. So maybe I'll just have reset here. So for hard mode, maybe this will be the actual button itself. So what we could do is we could just ABC okay. button. If button is four, then okay. Reset password. And then we return. Okay, we don't want any more. Okay, else my password plus equals to ABC. So I'll instead of having ABC uh D, I'll just have ABC. This for easy mode. Yeah, for hard mode, maybe I can add in the D because I find that uh, ABCD is a bit too much bandwidth for most people. Yeah. So ABC and then I have the last button which is to reset. So A B C reset. Um so when we come up with the password itself in the actual password thing, the set goal will have A B C only. Yeah, we won't do A B C D, we'll just do A B C and then wrong. Okay, uh this should but I have no idea why people want to press the reset button though. Yeah. Index out of range. Set go ninety two. Oh, nah. I'm just thinking, either that, or I can reduce the solution count. Instead of five, I do like three, so that it's not that daunting for people to remember such a long password. Yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll do that. Yeah, because like it doesn't really make sense to have a reset button. Okay, maybe let's try the reset approach first. Let's, let's try the reset approach. Play it. I see how it goes. Okay, I'll see how it goes. So, three. Random dot range three. Okay, I, I think this, this is good. Let's just try it. Okay, let's just try it. Index range was outside. Okay, so um, this is button equals to three. Okay, the last button is button is three, rather than button is four. Because if you see the button here, when we call execute button, we give it a parameter three. Okay, so that was a, a small error on my part. Okay, so when we play this, this should reset. Wrong, wrong. B C D D. Okay, so okay, I think the the transit to the next scene part. It might be a little too fast for the light run because like I barely got a chance to see what color light it was then the whole scene changed already. So maybe we, we got to change that. Okay, we got to change that. Uh, later we'll change that. Okay, so now the password wise, just trying to get a feel of, of the game. So like A, 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 B, B. Okay, 
So maybe what I can do is in order to make this like a little more fair for people. Okay, so I can sort of like nah, I don't think I will give the password to them so easily. I want them to, to try it out. Yeah. Okay, so uh the scene manager dot load next scene part. Okay, I could replace with a uh, kind of Okay, so for this doesn't apply just for uh, this doesn't just apply for this password. It applies for actually everything else like bulk number counts. So what I like to do is I like to have another I enumerator here. Load scene. Uh, next scene. Maybe we just call it next scene. Okay, and then over here is you return new wait for seconds one. Okay, and then we do scene changer dot load next scene. Or what we could do is in the scene changer code itself. Okay. In the load next scene. Okay. We could do a delay over here. So what we can do is is, is this start whole routine. I think that might be better. Then I don't have to change my scripts here. I don't have to change my scripts here. I can just do a scene changer dot load next scene because it's my own inbuilt function anyway. I could just do the the next scene code within here, and then what we'll do is we we'll have a i enumerator next scene. So this i enumerator, as what I said earlier, is meant to just help you to do a slight delay. Okay, so we can do a u return new wait for seconds, and then maybe a one one second delay. Okay, after the one second delay, then I will do the, the next scene like this. Yeah, so let's just see how this looks like in, in practice. So let's go to our scenes main menu. Let's start from here and we see how, how this looks like. So start. Full routine can't be started because the game object scene changer is active. It's inactive. Why is the game object inactive? Yeah, that was kind of weird. Yeah, maybe maybe a point five seconds delay. Yeah, and and probably for the start menu, for the start menu we don't want to load. Next scene we do, we don't really need the delay. We can just. I don't know. They said my scene changer is not active. So let's just see what happens. When I click my main menu, whole routine could not be started because the game object scene changer is not active. Then my question is why is it not active? Because it's clearly active over here. I mean what I could do right now is for my buttons. I could just change scene and I change it to stage one. Yeah, that would be better actually. And I will not use the delay for this first scene. Three plus four minus five minus seven. Oh, 
Okay, good. Good. So, looks. B C P B B C P A Okay, so maybe uh just to help people a bit at the beginning here we could have either a sound cue or a verbal cue to just show people how the password looks like. Maybe I could just you know display the password for a really really short time. At the beginning, so when I have my password here. I will display my goal password straight away at the beginning. So like we can set the goal first, then reset password, right? So there could be like I could like show them the, the goal immediately after I set it. Yeah, I could just straight away print the goal password and this will basically help to get the password printed out straight away when I start my game. Okay, it didn't really work. Okay, because I don't have a delay at all after my print password. Yeah, I wonder if I want to do that though. Like, just show them the password story. Then let them figure out which is the, the password itself. Or let them guess the password. What do you think? Should I just show the password straight away or let people guess it? I think letting people guess the password seems fairer in that sense. Like, it's like no fun if I keep up the password like that, right? It's more fun if you guess the password yourself. Yeah, but then again, I have an issue that like people might take too long to find out what to do. Mm. Yeah, I'm not too keen to print out the password actually. Yeah, I mean, what's the fun, right? If I give you the answer already, I already reduce it to three buttons, and that should be a bit more manageable. Maybe for starters, instead of five, yeah, just to make it easy mode, the uh, solution count. Maybe instead of five, we have four instead. Yeah, five might be a bit too long. Just do four instead. Who knows? Yeah, let's just try four. Okay. Oh, I realized something. When I changed four, the solution count didn't change yet. So it's important once you make a variable public, you should change the the number from the outside. So something like this, wrong. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think instead of this being reset, we could just make this a C A C C C A C A C C A C. Ah, okay. So I got an, uh, an idea for this yellow button. So instead of making this yellow button be reset, which doesn't make sense for the password, because I already so this one is show or show or hide. Yeah. So so, so basically this will basically show the password okay so over here uh what we'll do is so we should have a bool show password and this should be false at the beginning so whenever we print our password else if show password that means if, if we want to show password then what we'll do is we will then show the password itself password text dot text equals to go no equals to my password the okay, plus new string basically the next part is the same like that else we will do this if text is this and if not else this one okay so that's all for the print password command okay so um it will basically now toggle on and off the password to show the password or not so that makes more sense for this button right show or hide yeah, i guess i think if i have a b c and d it kinds of kind of feels very laborious to play this game because there's just too many buttons to press so at least one show and hide you know let people that okay yes i can see what password it is so that is the thing okay show so show a height uh the password wrong is still okay it still be there okay so we do have this show password now and the show password will be amended over here once you press button three okay we don't have to return anymore because i do want to to print out the password like that yeah. so whenever we reset at the beginning our show password is false okay and then we can just set it here okay but i guess when we do our reset password we don't want to we don't exactly want to Toggle the show password also, so let's just do it like that. So the the show and hide thing doesn't affect the password at all, but it's like probably just a distraction for people who want to see the password. This show or hide. See. almost c a a c a a i think it's b awesome so at least now there's a delay between the scene changing it should be much more smooth okay it would be much smoother um to do this okay so i think that's more or less it for the scene changer oh, sorry for the okay so target color is green Password. No, no. C. This one can toggle. C. A. You can toggle back again. So this toggle doesn't change anything. C. A. B. B. Ah, uh, it's not. C. A. B. A. Damn it. C. A. B. C. Awesome. Yeah. So I think I'll conclude here for the day. Yeah, it's good to end the day strong. Okay, we have completed stage three. Next week, I'll do stage four. So stage four, just to give you a glimpse of what stage four is, it will be similar to stage two, just that instead of like coloring the bulb with a color, it will be either on or off. So there will be one bulb, two bulb, three bulb, four bulb, five bulbs. The number of bulbs uh, will, will range, will vary, but the concept is the same. Uh, what we want to do is we basically want to 
light up the entire row of light box. All five light box, we want to light them all up. Okay. And the buttons, one of them will control only one bulb. One of them controls two bulbs, two random bulbs. One of them controls three random bulbs. And maybe the last one contro controls all random bulbs. Okay, there's no reset button for this. So I will see again like how difficult the, the game is. And then I will adjust the difficulty accordingly. Like how I did for the password. So I want this uh, mode to be a very, very simple mode for at least because this is just the beginner's game. You know, we still have a hard mode here to code. So, you know, we don't want such a difficult game at the beginning. So stage three, I think the difficulty was just right. You just have three buttons and then instead of having this to be reset, which was kind of lame, it's just toggle word to show the password or not. These, and then I don't think I want to give people the password immediately because it kind of spoils the fun. Yeah, so that is uh, all for this, for today. And yeah, if you do have any suggestions as to like what kind of stages you want to see being coded, uh, remember the team is called four buttons. So um, whatever stage that you want to see, it should be codable with just having four buttons. Yeah, so yeah, you think about it. If you like to see some stage being code coded or you like to offer some ideas for my game, then uh, yeah, feel free to let me know. If not, uh, I'll end the stream early today and I'll see you all again next week. Okay, bye.